everybody, good to talk to you again. Uh, I wanted to share with you a story about a forest fire from the Mahabharata. Um, it is often used to illustrate um, what is called Krishna Leela, the idea that um, Krishna, um, the divine, is um, always at work in the world, um, often on a scale uh, and in a cycle that is beyond human understanding. So here goes. Uh, one day in the heart of summer, uh, Krishna and Arjuna were walking along the Yamuna River near Kandava Forest after bathing in the water. They were laughing together when a woodsman came towards them dressed in black rags. He was tall and thin, his skin was like gold, round his face spread his shaggy blonde hair and beard, and his mouth was smeared with butter. He smiled at them showing golden teeth and said, My lords, I am a hungry wanderer, please feed me. Arjuna answered, of course, we will give you what we can. What do you want to eat? The woodsman said, the forest of Kandava. He held out his open hand, and his palm flickered a tiny flame. I am Agni, the fire god, he said, and this dry forest must be my food. Arjuna greeted him with joined palms. But why? I am dull and weak, answered Agni, because I have eaten too much butter from the sacrifices of kings. I am sick, and only this will revive me. But I have tried seven times to burn Kandava and always failed, for each time Indra comes and protects it with soft rain. Krishna said, Tell me if any people live in this desolate wilderness of Kandava. No one, said Agni. Or animals? A few. They will run before me and escape, Krishna. And the bright birds and tangled trees? The birds will fly. The trees have their roots beyond my reach. This is a strange forest. None of those under your protection will burn. Arjuna said, Then give us the means, and we shall hold off Indra. I give. Agni gave Arjuna the bow, the bow, the, uh, bow and arrow of Gandiva, two quivers of arrows that could never be exhausted, and a many-colored chariot with white horses and a flag showing an angry ape. The god said, These are for you, Bharata, meaning Arjuna, until I take them back from you. In the chariot there is an iron discus for Krishna. This is enough, said Krishna. You are generous to us, Agni. Lord Narayana, replied the god, that heavy chakra, that discus, razor sharp round its rim, with a thousand spokes, with an iron rod through a hole in its center to throw it, that has been yours since you created it. I have but kept it for you. The deep earth shook and trembled, and there was a tearing sound like the straining of a great tree in the wind. Arjuna had strung the Gandiva bow, bow, he jumped into the chariot with Krishna and said, We are ready. From all the worlds, fire then departed. All the fires went out one by one, leaving kitchens and lamps and fire drills and stones, leaving the palaces of kings and the huts of farmers, leaving all heaven and earth and the underworld of the Nagas. Seven tongues of flame appeared on Agni's brow. His hair caught fire, and a hot wind blew through Kandava. Dust clouds darkened the sky, branches were torn from the trees and sent crashing down. Agni bent and touched the dry underbrush with his finger, and then the smoke-bannered Lord of Fire vanished into a sheet of flame that struck Krishna and Arjuna with its heat and forced the chariot horses back. Burning leaves and sticks were blown into the wind and the fire shot up to heaven. The gods asked Indra, What is Agni doing? Has the time come to destroy the three worlds? Indra looked down upon Kandava. He saw the trees explode and twist and fall, showering sparks into the wind like a river of fire. Rumbling thunderclouds fell low over the, over the forest, and, forest and hid the sun, pouring rain like a thousand waterfalls. Lightning flashed angrily among the flames. Smoke rose and blackened the clouds. The darkness became blacker. The rain fell street steaming and boiling. Then... Quickly as the moon covers the sky with fog, Arjuna covered the sky, the fire, with a roof of arrows. He struck down Indra's thunderbolts before they could break his arrows. But the weight of the rainwater crushed the roof. Water fell as though Kandava were to be buried under an ocean, and the flames hissed and wavered. A fire-mouthed arrow sped from Gandiva bow into the clouds, and they were destroyed, dried out, and blown away. The sun shone adown, and the fire roared again, roared again through the forest. When Indra saw his rain clouds torn and scattered by the wind weapon, 
he appeared in the sky on his white elephant holding a thunderbolt, and with him were other gods of heaven, all tall and still as mountains. Varuna, god of the ocean, rode on a fish and held his noose. Yama, lord of the dead, with his green skin and red robes, sat on his buffalo with a deadly mace. Skanda, the war god, sat on a peacock, pointing his long last lance motionless, his six faces all turned straight at Arjuna. Vaishravana, the lord of treasure, was in his car with a spiked club. Surya, the sun, held a bright dart. The twin Ashvins stood holding green plants of poison. Thunder rolled across the sky. Meteors whirled across the heavens in bright streaks and fell smoking on the earth. Krishna saw the gods surrounding Indra, protected by armor of gold and tough leather. They stood without fear down near the horizon, not far away, all looking at Arjuna and Krishna. Their eyes never blinked, and their weapons shone like a second sun. Stand still, said Krishna. This will be my work. Indra raised his thunderbolt and threw it at them with all his strength. But as it sped crackling through the air, Krishna threw his chakra against it, and the two met in the sky. Those two are slain, cried Indra, as the sky and earth shook with a great explosion and shock. But the chakra was back in Krishna's hand. The thunderbolt lay in angry pieces on the earth. Krishna called, Indra, have you not heard of us in heaven? I have heard, answered the Lord of the gods. Blessings to you both. We go now. Who can fight against the soul of all life and his friend of old? And the gods vanished and were gone. Krishna laughed, Arjuna, this is the world. There is no other. Arjuna looked around them. The forest was nearly consumed, and Agni was visible again as a man, but strong and swift and bright. His eyes were blazing scarlet, his crimson tongue flaming, his hair all fiery, and he was chasing someone. It was the Asura, the demon Maya, the architect of the old gods, who ran from the flames. Then Maya burst out of the forest and cried, the protection of Arjuna, run to me, quickly. Arjuna called to him, no fear. And the chariot raced towards Maya. The flames turned back and died away. Agni joined his hands in Namaste and vanished. Maya, the Asura, jumped into Arjuna's chariot. It was evening, and only burning coals showed where Kandava forest had been. Arjuna drove along the river for a while, and then those three... Arjuna, Krishna, and the Asura, Maya, got down from the chariot and sat on the delightful riverbank. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, we'll see each other again soon. I'm not sure if we'll have the class this Saturday. It all depends on how things turn out. I hope you're well. Talk to you soon.